Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today, I have an Android box. You might be asking yourself whether they still exist in 2020. And the answer is yes, they actually still exist and they are quite useful. This one sells for around $60 on Amazon. Let's look at the box first. You can tell that their target audience is people without smart TVs. Actually, I got this even though I have a smart TV, but it's getting very slow, so it was time for a replacement. This was sold as an 8K Android box. 8K! I don't see anything about 8K on the box though, and I can't really try simply because I don't have an 8K TV. Who does? Rest of the specs actually match the ones on the Amazon page, so I know that I got the right product. Specs aren't mind-blowing, but they're actually decent for an Android box in 2020. We'll see how well it performs in 1080p and 4K. It comes with Android 9.0, and I can assure you that it'll actually stay with Android 9.0 till it dies. Actually, it has an app called Update, but it fails to connect to the server every time it checks for an update. Am I surprised? Not really. Funny side note, on the left side of the box, we see the logos of Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, another YouTube, and Tumblr? Okay. The build quality is decent. It's all plastic, and actually on the bottom, you can see the main board through the air vents. On the back, you have DC input, an optical audio out port, a 3.5mm jack, an HDMI port, an Ethernet port, and a USB 2.0 port, as well as a USB 3.0 port. It has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it actually supports the Wi-Fi AC standard. That's actually a nice addition. It's the first Android box that I own, which comes with AC support. It also shows the time in front. It comes with a remote, an HDMI cable, as well as the power adapter. The power adapter works between 100 and 240 volts. When you fire it up for the first time, you see the welcome screen. This screen is familiar to me from other Android boxes, and it is not the vanilla Android one. Once you're done, as you can guess, you get greeted by a third-party launcher. Personally, I really like the vanilla Android TV launcher, so I wasn't really happy about this. The included remote is pretty basic with two extras. Firstly, you can actually control your TV with it, and secondly, it has a button that lets you use the arrow keys on the remote as mouse control. Similar to other boxes, it doesn't let you use the numpad for T9 input. In my room with my phone, I get around 120 down and 50 up when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. However, this box actually gets around 20 down and 20 up. It has gigabit ethernet though, which is great, and it actually gets around 450 down and 55 up when it's connected to my router. It comes with Google Play Store as well as two third-party app stores as you probably won't be able to find what you're looking for on the Play Store. This is actually quite common among the Android boxes. Netflix is an example to this. You can't download it from the Play Store, but you can from APK Pure. In this sense, it has all the Android box basics. It's rooted, it comes with a third-party launcher, and it has a lot of extra apps. One of them is an AirPlay mirroring app. It lets you mirror stuff to the box directly from your iPhone, however, it doesn't work with paid services like Netflix or Prime Video. This is not a huge problem as the box already has those apps. This is actually quite useful if you want to play a video you took on your iPhone. It naturally has Kodi installed, but that's not it. They actually included another app which lets you illegally stream TV series or movies. They didn't even try to hide it. At 1080p, it's a real smooth experience. It supports 1080p at 60Hz, and I didn't see any lag whatsoever. This is a vague statement, but actually all the apps on the box open up super quickly. Compared to the smart apps of my TV, this is blazingly fast. It only supports 4K at 30Hz, so it's not going to be as smooth as 1080p. However, I didn't experience any slowdowns when I was using it in 4K. Again, on the product page it says that it works at 8K, however, as I don't have an 8K TV, I can't try this out. When streaming from Netflix or YouTube, the image quality is comparable to the vanilla apps of my smart TV or my computer when it's hooked up to the TV. Keep in mind that I have a cheap-ish 4K TV with no HDR support. Apps like YouTube let you control them using your phone. Not everyone will connect an external keyboard and a mouse to their box, so being able to use your phone is a huge plus. You can also use your phone as a remote for the whole box as well. One of the advantages of using an Android box instead of the vanilla apps of your TV or a Chromecast is productivity. I have a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse lying around, and I connected them to the box. Then, I downloaded apps like Google Docs and Microsoft Word, and they work very well, for the most part. The problem is the on-screen keyboard. It doesn't disappear when you connect an external keyboard as it's designed to be used with a remote. This is not a huge deal because you can manually make it disappear. However, the bigger problem is the enter key. When you press enter on your Bluetooth keyboard, the box doesn't process it as an enter, but as a click. This either does nothing or gets processed as a click on the on-screen keyboard. Either way, it's not good. Overall, if you don't have a smart TV or the included apps of your smart TV aren't enough for you, this is a great product. Alternatively, you can get a cheap Chromecast but you always need to use your phone and you don't get the extra functions. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and I really hope I'll see you all next time.